Being loaded. Our favourite is the Japanese runner in prognosis at 340. There has been solid support for broadsiding into 650. Uh, Pride of Jenny on the drift slightly to 440, but still remaining solid. Uh, ben, as Gary, final thoughts before the horses move right. in. It's going to be so interesting. How does prognosis get out of the gates? How quick does Jenny go out in front? There's just so much theatre and so much to take in from the moment these gates open. Let's go to Matt Hill for the call of the Ladbrokes Cox play. Pride of Jenny into barrier number seven. Kieran Maher, of course, winning this race with Sir Dragon A via Sestina. It's been a dramatic week. But she's nice and settled going into barrier four. So they're making a decent line. Royal Patronage is in, broadsiding forward. Prognosis going into barrier number five. And that will leave Kovalika. The 104th running of Australia's best race. The Ladbrokes Cox place and the field is set. Ready, Prognosis lifting. Crowd roars. They stand. Racing in the Cox Plate. Evaporates slow and almost stumbled out of the gates via Sestina away fairly. Royal Patronage led the race early. Pride of Jenny and Prognosis right up there and driving up Evaporate made a line of four at the post. So Pride of Jenny steadily working across four deep on the first corner. They were followed by Mr. Brightside. Dock lands the inside. Two and a half via Sestina. Kova and broadsiding last. So Royal Patronage led 1,600 to go. Pride of Jenny sits outside of it for now. Prognosis a length and a quarter away. Third from Evaporate, who's kept three wide. A length and a half, Mr. Brightside. Dock lands via Sestina. Kovalika is second last. Broadsiding last. Pride of Jenny went to the front. Bottom corner, 1,300 to go. And Pride of Jenny's put up three lengths now from Prognosis second. Royal Patronage passed by Evaporate on that corner. They were followed by Mr. Brightside. A length and a half to Dock lands, then via Sestina next in the field, Kovalika and Broad siding at halfway, Pride of Jenny is the leader in the Cox Plate by about two and a half to Prognosis keeping the mare at his sights a length and three quarters away, Evaporate then came Royal Patronage and Mr Brightside as they run towards the 700 metres, via Sestina seven off the lead at least from Dock Lands Broad siding, Kovalika so it's Pride of of Jenny, 600 metres to go. A length and a half to Prognosis, who's nice and close. They're two lengths in front of Via Sestina, who's coming into it. Mr Brightside's coming with her, and then came Royal Patronage. Pride of Jenny grabbed by Prognosis, but Via Sestina now pushes the button on the outside and goes up and takes the lead. Via Sestina, 300 metres to go. Puts up two legs. Prognosis dock lands Mr Brightside, and then came Royal Patronage. But Via Sestina storms away with 150 to go. She's four, five lengths in front. It's going to be a Cox Plate route. And James McDonald, a century of the very best. Thea Sestina by seven lengths. Second prognosis. Third in the race was Broadsiding. Mr. Brightside next. Then Docklands Kovalika. Royal Patronage, Pride of Jenny and Evaporate last. Tuesday is but a memory when Saturday comes. James McDonald becomes the first jockey since the great Brent Thompson in 1977, 78 and 79 to win the Cox Plate in three consecutive years on three different horses and in doing so joins a rare group to win 100 Group 1s. Chris Waller, who won four Cox Plates on the Mighty Winks, wins a fifth in stunning fashion on a mare that he has managed in a manner that perhaps only Chris Waller and his team can since the early hours of Tuesday morning when James McDonald was dislodged as Via Sestina became entangled in bandages at about the 150 metre mark and about the 150 metre mark is where Via Sestina had put the 104th Ladbrokes Cox Plate to bed. We didn't draw up a speed map that had prognosis sitting just behind Pride of Jenny. It was a bold ride from Damien Lane. The Japanese galloper has hung on for second. But James McDonald, three straight Cox plates. He, his 100th Group 1 comes aboard the mighty Via Sestina. He's alongside Charlotte Littlefield. Well, James, I feel very honoured to be next to you here. You have joined an elite group of riders, many of whom you admire 
greatly, such as Hugh Bowman, your good friend. You've won 100 Group 1s, you've won three Cox Plates in a row. If this isn't a movie script, I don't know what else is. Just, I'm just so lucky. I'm, I, what this me has been through, and she's just an absolute star. I'm so lucky to be part of it. To Chris Waller and all his team, I see Tommy Simpson working on her on Tuesday morning. Chris Harwood flew down on Thursday to work her. And all of them, all of them said, excuse my French, she'll shit in. I, I, I honestly can't believe it. I love this race. I love this place. And to win a Cox Plate with Chris Waller, who is my greatest supporter and so special. I, I, it's so fitting he's brought up my 100s and to do it in such a prestigious race like the Cox Plate. I'm blessed, so blessed. You've been quoted as saying that privilege, the, pre the pressure you feel in these big occasions is a real privilege. I mean, that's, that's so evident right now, isn't it? But uh, you've partnered one of the best horses in the world. I mean, tell me more about her. What makes her so incredible? She's, she's got an um, unbelievable sustained speed and I think it's a huge asset to have in this high pressure race. Um, the pressure was on from the get go and Jenny didn't have her piece. This horse has really worked really well here even though I, f I fell off her on Tuesday. She felt like she was gliding around the course really well. and. Um, I, I had a I had a quiet first half and I, I wheeled her out, kept her happy, and she seems just to grow a bit of confidence. And it was a winks like performance. So I just, Charlotte, I can't believe it. I uh, I can believe it. You're both champions. I want you to go and enjoy this moment. But let me know. Let me know first of all how you're going to celebrate this moment. Oh, look, I I don't know. I just honestly, it's I just feel so so freaking lucky. I I I. I I don't know what I'm feeling right now. I'm just, I'm just blessed, and my beautiful family will be watching her. They'll be so over the moon. All my supporters can't thank any, everyone enough. I, I'm lucky to be in this industry and riding such wicked, unbelievable fast horses. Well, I think everyone's very excited to see you. So uh, go and celebrate, and well done. That was a very special moment. George Daly, you've just strapped the winner of the Cox Plate. How does that feel? Yeah, she was very good. Um, considering where we were at the beginning of the week, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a change anyway. Tell us, how long have you been with the team? So I've been with Chris for three months now and then came down with her from Sydney. So I've been down here about two months now with her and she just got better and better for the two months. When you were out there trying to catch her on Tuesday morning, can you believe you're standing here in this position right now? Uh, yeah, well, full credit to Chris and everyone and Chris Harwood for coming down to Ida. Steve, he rides it down here. No, awesome, awesome. Your family would be so proud back home. Oh, I don't know, they probably won't be up. <laughs> Chris Waller is with us. He's just keeping an eye on another mighty mare that he's brought to the valley with the utmost success. He's heading out to be part of this moment with Via Sestina, who's was just, just thrashed a world-class field in the 104th running of the Ladbrokes Cox Plate. And these are pictures that are going to reverberate around the racing world. James McDonald, 100 Group 1s, and he's the first jockey in 45 years. He emulates the deeds of his countryman, Brent Thompson, and in winning this great race on three different horses in three consecutive years. A handshake and a well-earned one at that from Mooney Valley Racing Club CEO Michael Brow. And what looked like disaster perhaps on Tuesday has returned on Thursday for a canter and now victory. And he'll share the moment with Mr Zhang. A warm embrace with Sam Fairgrave, Bing Cox. And it's a moment to savour for you, Long, Chris Waller, and everyone attached to the Via Sestina story. Chris, to see what we've just seen in a, such a dominant performance against such a world-class field in a Cox Plate, 
You've had some amazing moments in this game and at this venue, but I imagine this might supersede them all given what's unfolded since Tuesday morning. Yeah, it was a big week. Um, yeah, but I've just had full support from the owners, my staff, all the team, um, Mooney Valley. It's just been... It's just been overwhelming. Yeah, there's not been any negativity, um, only positive vibes and... Yeah, I'm so proud of her, so proud of her. Mm. How pivotal was it to reset things, address what had happened on Tuesday morning? I'll just let Chris try and calm her down, given there's a lot of people around via Sestina. She's dealt with quite a bit during the course of the week. We don't need another lap. She's done enough of them yeah. across the week. But how important was it to reset things in the immediate aftermath? Tuesday, you and James were fantastic, speaking to the media immediately. But then also, how pivotal was Marty Sine and Michael Brow opening up the track on Thursday to allow her to come back? There was probably be 10 key factors, and it's not anything else except common sense. Simple as that. Yeah, so we didn't, never lost faith and uh, just, just followed our instinct. Is so the hardest thing you've had to deal with in your time training? Probably not. <laughs> Getting started was pretty hard. These are, I'm, I've been, I'm blessed to be training horses like this. So, uh, yeah, getting started was a lot harder. Chris, well done. This is an amazing performance in what has been a phenomenal career. Congratulations on your fifth Cox Plate. Thank you. Thank you. What a performance. And to put that into perspective, the margin is significant of eight lengths by two lengths. But the time of 2.01.07 smashes, obliterates, absolutely destroys. <clears throat>